Welcome back to my series on patching a gigantic self-generating polycrawl patch. Last time around we looked at using a master voltage, or what I, I like to call a form engine. It's like a little sub patch that controls a whole bunch of things in our patch and bends it and shapes it in different ways so that as that single voltage changes over time, slowly or swiftly, the whole patch will follow along with it. And in this way, we can correlate a whole bunch of different things in our patch to follow along with this voltage. So now what we're listening to is we're listening to the two paraphonic harmony voices that we created using two telharmonics in shift register mode. They're each running off their own Corel function generators. And that's the two inside, channel two and three here on our quadrax. And then they're passed on to an Intelligel Corgasmatron 2 that's doing just a little bit of light filtering in its 12 dB per octave low pass mode. And we're not going crazy with the resonance or with the filtering. It's just there to give a little bit of kind of brassy shaping. You can hear it doing its thing in the background. And like we saw in our previous video, this, these voices are in the same mixer, so they're also headed to the reverb that we're shaping and morphing using this same voltage. So now I've got it running about midway. I'll just bring it up a little bit. So that means it's about three and a half uh, volts on our dope for VU meter and it is running in the E flat minor pentatonic mode that I've got set up and I just wanted to give you a quick idea of what's happening with the incoming voltage that is controlling it along with the rest of the Corel voltages. So like we saw last time, this pink lead comes into CVA. CVA is controlling the rise and the fall on our melody. But let's take a look and see what it is doing with these telharmonic parts. So if I put the quadrax into CV mode, I can see that three incoming CVs are being used to control it. And if I click on A, then I can see that A is coming in and it's controlling rise and fall, just like we saw in the last video with the melody crell. I've got the incoming voltage inverted so that higher voltages make the Krell run quicker. And then and there's a dim green light here, and that's on the shape destination. So I'm also using that incoming voltage to very slightly modulate the shape of that Krell. And you can see that I've got that knob set just at about maybe uh, one o'clock or so. Um, and what happens is that voltage comes in and magically turns that knob for us, slightly adjusting the shape. And if I go to channel three, it's the exact same thing. I'm coming in with that inverted voltage, full blast at 100%. That's modulating our rise and fall. And then I'm using a tiny little bit of that to modulate our shape. So the shape will change as that Krell function speeds up due to our master voltage speeding up. I'm gonna speed it up now. So it'll tend to get a little bit chirpier. It gets a little bit shorter, but we can still hear the effect of the modulators on it. Now those two paraphonic harmony parts are being modulated by one side of the Vulcan modulator and one side of the Dalek modulator, both of which are being sped up by this same voltage we're using to control everything else. If I bring it up right past five volts, now I get to our change of scale in the quantizer and now it's really clipping along. So I've got 
those both of those corals running quite quickly and that means that both the telharmonics are updating their shift registers very very quickly and of course like I explained in the last video the voltage passing through the quantizer that triangle LFO has also sped up to ensure that every that all the sample and holes and there's a lot of them in this patch are being updated as quickly as possible let's keep going and speeding it up So I spent a lot of time tuning the range of this voltage and it goes right up well, just kind of under audio rate to the point where it's, it's not really grabbing musical notes that are useful but it becomes its own little sound kind of timbral almost percussive thing that's going on. We could continue pushing it up right into audio rate until eventually the shift registers won't be able to update. And then the output won't become musically me meaningful anyway in terms of the notes, but that, that doesn't mean that it won't sound great. And I'll start to slow it back down and we'll get to the key change. And I'm down at just over four volts. And I really tuned this little example to be useful, I'm still continuing to drop the voltage as you can see on the dope for you view, but I tuned it to be useful really between about, now there's another key change, to be useful from about one and a half volts, and I'll swing it all the way back up. just after the key change. So now just over five volts, so that it gets me through three different scales and quite a wide range of different, um, different crawl speeds. So let's slow it back down. And I'm just gonna pop in the melody. Now the melody is our red trace. The green trace on the scope is the counterpart, but we're not listening to it. And then we've got two of the paraphonic voices running. So how is it that I'm able to change, like source and change this one voltage and send it all over the system? Let's take a quick look and see how we did that. So typically when I'm working on one of these kinds of patches, I'll choose some sort of controller, like I did at the very beginning of this video series, some 17 videos earlier, where I was using a joystick and then doing some tests around how that joystick could control a single Corel envelope. Now what I'm doing is I'm using a dope for ribbon, and I really like using a dope for ribbon in these kinds of cases because the voltage stays where you put it and you've got a long gliding kind of a surface area so it really gives you a lot of control over um, a lot of control and accuracy over what voltage you're at so it's easy enough to just kind of glide and hear what it does And the big black bars that you see are where the um, key changes are. So I spent considerable time tuning how the voices would respond to this voltage and what the range of the voltage is. And that ends up being a huge part of this kind of work. Because the moment that I source the voltage 
and plugged it into the quadrax, it messed up all of my krells. Now all of a sudden, my krells were doing all this weird stuff and they weren't following along nicely like they were before because suddenly I'm biasing them off into some other different place entirely. So then I had to spend a lot of time getting it back to the place that it was at before, but then also get it to sound the way I want and respond to modulations over this new range of voltages that I'm sending in. And I'm just going to show you a quick, quick trick that I use when setting up these controllers. So imagine for a moment that I want to set up the range of this controller, and I do it by patching it into an attenuator or an attenuverter, and then I'm going to set that attenuator or attenuverter to set the range of just how much voltage I want out of these. Now it just so happens that the dope for a ribbon actually has one of those on the, its output. So I've already done that. But here's a quick trick that helps when you're trying to set up something like that. Essentially you want to take your controller, whether it is an antenna, or it's a joystick, or it's a wheel, or a ribbon, and you want to bring it up right to its maximum. So I've got my finger right up on the maximum and it'll output something like 8 volts. And then while, I've, while I'm holding it on its maximum, and I've got this one programmed now to just hold a voltage, then I go to the attenuator and I basically use it to tune where I want that maximum voltage to be. So I don't have to move around or fiddle around with the ribbon. It just starts to get confusing if I'm operating two different variables at the same time. I just keep the ribbon all the way up, set the attenuator to where I want it, and then boom, everything under that is my usable range. And the same is true if I'm using an offset and an attenuator, which we saw in the earlier parts of the video are a huge part of this patch. And in order to tune what the patch is doing as I slide my finger across the ribbon and change the speed of the modulating oscillators that are controlling these crawls, I've had to go back to my original offset attenuators and control how much of those LFOs I'm allowing to control our Krell envelopes. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this video series so far. We've covered a lot of ground. I'm certainly heartened to see that you folks are getting some benefit out of it. Please feel free to post some of your examples, and please feel free to reach out. Uh, if you'd like to help support me to make more videos and to do more of these complex patches, you can support me on my Patreon. There's a link in the description, and there is a link here on the video. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time. Thank you.